जन आलम खा के टीवी देखने वाले दोस्त अहबाब सबको वेलकम आज के इस वीडियो में मैं एक बहुत ही पावरफुल यंग मैन को दावत दिया हूं कि आपसे अपने एजुकेशनल प्रोसेस के बारे में खाबों के बारे में ड्रीम्स के बारे में आपसे और हमसे गुफ्तु करे और मुझे उम्मीद है यंगस्टर्स बहुत कुछ इनकी बातों से सीखेंगे ये नौजवान हैं अली जैन बाबुल साहेब और ये वो खुश नसीब है कि जिन्होंने इंटरनेशनल बेकुलरेट किया है आई बी दुबई से और अपने लॉन्ग जर्नी फ्रॉम दुबई टू कनाडा ऑन द वे हैं ह्यूस्टन यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स में और मुझे पता चला कि ये नौजवान साहब जो हैं एक बड़े अच्छे स्टडी के लिए बाहर जाने वाले हैं आ, तो इसलिए मैंने इनको दावत दी कि वो जाना था कि टीवी पर कुछ गुफ्तु करें अपने विजन के बारे में आ, अपने स्टडी के बारे में ताकि हम बहुत कुछ इनसे सीख सकें तो अली जैन बाबू साहब आपको आज के इस टीवी में आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Mm-hmm. Shukriya, bahut bahut shukriya. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you, beta. Um, what I would like to ask you as the first question is, how has been your educational experience while doing IB in Dubai? Yeah, uh, I feel that the IB program is a very good program, especially if you're looking to study abroad in Canada or in the United States or in the UK. Um, it's not as if as if if you don't see bsc of any of the indian or pakistani curriculums it's not very memorization based but mm-hmm. it's more application based so they teach you the methods in how to solve certain questions or in how to um it's on memorization so i've actually done cbsc as well up until grade 7 okay. so i know both i know both of the um both of the curriculums and in cbsc it was all just you know memorizing what am i you know that thing Um, right. but coming to IB in grade 8 it was a drastic shift it was um my skills were no needed like uh, my memorization skills were useless because the tests were based on who won that the war in 1971 but it's about oh. why did they choose certain tactics in the, in the wars right wow. yeah um and then it's more on essay writing which i feel essay writing is a big is useful skill in university especially Excellent. um um in my first year i just come my first year last semester uh, last year and i did it completely online because of covid mm-hmm. in university but um a lot of my peers were struggling doing essay writing but mm-hmm. due to me doing the ib program it was very um i didn't struggle that much just the how to structure an essay um what to include what not to include in an essay um i feel that the ib program is the best program for high school students okay lovely yeah. um having uh, reached to this uh, stage and having gone through this particular educational program if i were to ask you what is it that has remained on your mind mm-hmm. as to what the life is and do you ever have you ever got a chance to think for example what mm-hmm. is life or how this particular course actually introduce you to life or try to give you skills or perspectives about life i'm just wondering if uh, you would like to say one or two sentences how you see the world around you within you and outside you sure um so in my high school in ib program uh there's actually a program for this oh yes so in philosophy it's called theory of knowledge t o k and oh. it's uh in this they give you deep questions where you think about it oh. you learn about it and then each subject in your each class if for example doing politics something economics something maths they all have these theory of knowledge components in the this oh, really? so how does this relate to like oh yeah. oh 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 so so what did you get out of it um it allows you to think out of the out of the box so when you're doing a certain course it's not just for the maths so why we, why we learning this maths what's the use what's so useful behind we are doing maths it's not mm-hmm. just doing one plus one but what, why are we doing it mm-hmm. um and to ask question um what we learned in that is not about answering questions but about asking questions right it's like 
what is life and what is our purpose in life and oh, okay. really starting to reflect on these questions and reflection is another key aspect yeah, in good. international biker rates Very good. you reflect on everything you do okay and that makes you it, it makes you stand out even when you're doing university applications and everything mm -hmm. it makes you stand out so you i'm doing constant reflection in my essays in my writing and that is very important, I feel, for me to grow as a person is to reflect on what I did before and how to um, better myself. Wow. I'm very glad to hear these words as a student of education, being a teacher myself. You know, this thinking and uh, particularly critical thinking also. Um, you know, much of our education, as you rightly pointed out, is all about memorizing facts. Although to some extent they may be important because memory plays a crucial role. Uh, memory is an important tool of epistemology to learn things, to remember things. Unless we remember certain things, it's difficult to know anything. Uh, so memory has its own part, but focusing too much on memory has uh, uh, you know problems. So I'm very glad that uh, you, are, you have already learned some of these skills and hopefully these skills of thinking, reflective practice, and, and more particularly now you will learn critical thinking. Uh, so will be some of the great tools that you will take with you to the University of Toronto. Um, excellent, I'm, I'm particularly happy about these areas. Uh, I'm wondering, um, uh, Zain, what subjects or uh, majors uh, you have selected for your study at the University of Toronto? Um, so I was in my first year, I did my first year last year, and we just uh, go into the department. So I chose to go into the departments of arts and science. Mm -hmm. So there's various different departments, depending on what major you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so there's computer science, there's commerce, there's life sciences. And um, so I chose arts and science. And uh, we don't declare actually a major in the first year. So mm -hmm. you can actually look which mm -hmm. course you want to do. All right. And so I had just declared my major. So I declared two majors. I'm doing a double major. Mm -hmm. in economics and political science right excellent that's interesting mm -hmm. economics and political science what relationship do you see between uh, economics and politics um i think they go hand in hand Stuart, if, uh, to ask by the way no, no, no. <laughs> just no, 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 no. they go hand in hand there is mm -hmm. and there is politics and economics and there's economics and politics wow yeah. wow excellent so as a result uh, you know let us visualize uh, you know, you completed your master's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in these, uh, with these two measures. What do you intend to do? Do you want to be an economist or do you want to be a politician, mm -hmm. theoretical politician or practical uh, politician? I'm wondering what, what, what uh, things have motivated you mm -hmm. to select these subjects? Um, at this point, I'm quite unsure. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, um, yeah. and even to other students, I don't think you should be this sure about a decision. I'm only 18. Um, yeah, but so what, I, what I've learned so far in politics and economics is that the skills you learn in these areas mm -hmm. are multidisciplinary. You can apply them to anything. So over the summer, I had my summer break right now, and I did a consultancy uh, internship online. And um, I feel like consultancy is, a, is, a, um, is an area that I want to explore as well. Excellent. Um, professional okay. consulting, because the skills are very similar, but um, I'm just keeping my options open at this point. I have uh, to do various have internships. To do. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to decide now. But I'm just wondering, as we all have you know, certain yeah. visions, yeah. <laughs> sometimes fantasies, um, as to what we want to do, you know, but as we grow, uh, you know, uh, with our education, things keep on changing. Okay. Um, what I would like to ask you now is, you know, um, economics is a very wide subject and political science is a big subject and politics is a big subject. Very often people say, uh, I hate politics, uh, you know, because of the politicians or whatever. How would you look at it? Do you hate politics and politician or do you like polit uh, politics, but not like politicians? How do you see these two things? It's an interesting question. Um, oh, and a lot of people say that politics is boring and economics is boring, but it's very, I feel it's very um, academically heavy, as in there are a lot of research papers, <laughs> a lot of theories behind it. 
And that's what I find exciting about it. Learning the different theories, mm-hmm. learning the different aspects on how to look at one situation. Mm-hmm. You're looking, for example, you're looking at the relationships between India and Pakistan, but there's so many different viewpoints you can look at from. Sure. And that just fantasizes me. What has been your experience of politics, for example? Um, uh, so I live in Dubai, and Dubai is a very politically closed country <laughs> where you can't practice any freedom of speech. No, uh, you can't participate right. in the government. Okay. So my only real experience so far has uh, been <coughs> participating in um, modern United Nations as a delegate and as a chair. Oh, yes. Um, oh. But now I look forward to participating more in the government in Toronto, um, doing uh, protests and stuff like that. Wow. Can you explain what exactly you did uh, in, in MUN? In, yeah. In, yeah. So what my, is MUN? Sure. If you could explain what <laughs> well, sure. So uh, the United Nations, so the, the MUN is a model United Nations in which students like us can participate in debates that happen in the real United Nations. Okay. Um, so there's delegates who are delegates of each country, mm-hmm. um, just like the real United Nations. And there's chairs who moderate the debates between the delegates. Okay. And then there is one security, con- uh, there is one uh, um, uh, secretary general who is the head of the full uh, the full uh, session, the MUN. Okay. Right. And then in, in, in each each debate goes on a different session. So there's different um, councils that go on. So there's a security council, okay. which we know there is the, the P15, the permanent five. Mm-hmm. And then the 15 other countries. Mm-hmm. And then there is the General Assembly 1, General Assembly 2. It's a lot of different, and they all focus on different matters of different policy. Sure. Um, so my first time as MUN, uh, I did not know anything about this, but it's very public speaking heavy. So you need to be confident. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. But the first time I was very unconfident. My first time I did not speak at all in the three days of the conference. And that is okay. Uh, um, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, okay. Yeah, um, session is a big day. Exactly. So what the, the first time I did was I just observed. I just observed what they were, yeah, okay. what they were doing. Good quality. Um, and your observation is, is very key. Yeah, so seeing other delegates, what they were doing. Um, and then my second MUN, I went again as delegate. And I was actually uh, representing North Korea. Oh, so it was, uh, and my commission, my committee was wow. uh, in the weapons and arms. Wow. So it was very like, so I did my research bef- beforehand. And before you come into the uh, the conference, you have to write a position mm-hmm. paper on what your country, what's the position of your country. Mm-hmm. And you submit that to the chair. And th- those are your points that you speak about. So uh-huh. I did I did thorough research uh, from beforehand because okay. I got North Korea. North Korea is a very, uh, it's a very uh, politically, Interesting. Interesting. Country. Interesting country. Yes. yes. Um, so yeah, and then I spoke a lot during that uh modern nations. Wow. Uh and then actually uh last year in my community, my community ran the Ismaili community over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, so Ismailis in Dubai ran their own MUN, the Ismaili Youth Modern Nations. Okay. And so they wanted certain people with MUN experience to become the chairs to run oh. the debates. So okay. one, so I got selected as one of them. Okay. So, to run the debates, um, and that was also a different experience. Wow. Moderating the, the what debates. a wonderful exposure! Yeah. Okay, yeah. wow, thank you very much. I'm just wondering, having seen uh, the United Nations nature or the character of dealing with complex, very subtle, very sophisticated issues, I'm sure lots of ideas must have come to your mind. I'm wondering if an idea like being one day, why not uh, uh, the UN or Secretary General? If you were to become the Secretary General of the United Nations one day, what would be your ideal thing, one thing that you would like to do for the people of this world? That's a very ambitious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know, I, I could take yeah, that, of course. Uh, exactly. um, it just, what do you see as uh, something very critical for you uh, to do uh, for the committee of nations right i feel um so the secretary general does not have that much power to actually change yeah, uh, I know. I know. um and it's very hard but the one thing i would say is that the debates that happen over there are very um it's very bureaucratic so if you actually want to make change happen uh-huh. there are a lot of things that has to go on uh, of course um, a lot of politics have been mm-hmm. played with countries so there's veto power like the russia <coughs> and the usa and the five countries they have veto uh-huh. power and if it's not in the national interest mm-hmm. to pass a certain resolution yeah, they will veto yeah. it yeah yeah um and china has done it time and time again um in so there was the sudan the case in sudan uh, sure. in darfur uh the whole human uh, human rights crisis in darfur um, China was supplying weapons 
to uh, to the Janja Bid, one of the militias in Darfur. Mm -hmm. And so the UN nation made a resolution against it that you cannot um, supply mm -hmm. weapons to them. Mm -hmm. And they vetoed it. They're like, no. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very it's very political. But the one thing I would do is just change the whole debate process, right? Change the whole resolution, the way um, you can vote. Make everyone give uh, okay. an equal um, voting system because uh, the P5, they have a lot of grasp, a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And just change that so that everyone gets a say in what to do. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, shifting a little bit uh, from macro to micro. Mm -hmm. uh, you lived in Dubai for these many years and interacted, uh, must have interacted with a number of people, you know, lots of people from different countries. Dubai is a very cosmopolitan uh, country. Uh, and, uh, Dubai city is very particularly cosmopolitan. How, what was your experience and how did you deal with that experience of dealing with so many people you know, yeah. from different uh, backgrounds in your school, uh, in IB program? Was there any particular kind of experience? Yeah, no. So Dubai is the perfect blend between the East and the West. It's where mm -hmm. they both meet. Mm -hmm. And actually, up until three years ago, I did not realize the people I was interacting with. Okay. So um, I actually come to the United States uh, three years ago by myself, and uh, I was talking to one of my cousins, and they were like, um, so you live in Dubai, you meet all these co different people with different yes. cultures. And uh, they were over here, they were just, um, they did not know a lot of things about outside, uh, about outside the US, but they knew everything about inside the US. They knew about geography and everything. They, wow. were, they were really um, knowledgeable in that, but not knowledgeable outside, about what countries are outside and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And then, while on the other hand, I was I knew I knew things about in the U.S. and outside as well, um, geographically and stuff where different countries are, and what the food just like that. Um, so I started reflecting. I'm like, I meet all these people from different cultures, and the opportunity I've been I've been given to meet these people to interact with them mm -hmm. on a daily basis. My school, um, my school was Australian, so it was uh, it was Australian. So there were a lot of oh. Australian teachers I was interacting with. Oh. Um, a lot of British teachers I was interacting with. Okay. And in my, my students, the majority base was Arabs. And so that was different. So it was just a blend. And up until last year, I didn't reflect truly upon how much it has impacted me as well. Um, right. Yeah, because I, I see myself, I don't have an Like my identity is very complex because I'm, I'm born in India. I have an Indian passport, but I lived in Dubai. And I'm just it's like, whenever someone asks me where I'm from, I'm like, I can't see Dubai. What do I say? Hey, what do I say? Exactly. <laughs> so like, India, Dubai. Exactly. Okay. Um, and now, like, I, I I took a moment to reflect on it. And it's just, it's crazy how just living in Dubai, it's it's been an amazing opportunity. But don't you think, um, uh, are you saying uh, this is what is called globalization or globalism? Of course. It's, it's, because in the global world, you have too many identities. Yeah. Same over here. You know, I was born in a rural area. Uh, very generally, in early childhood, I used to name uh, the village of it. Somebody would ask me, my name was, uh, you know, like that, Jani Adam Haki Hunzai. So I would use my, uh, you know, at that time, it wasn't district, it was uh, called a state, but then later on, it was merged with Pakistan. So it was a region, let us call it, you know, uh, it was a small region. Uh, and so, Hunzai was for me a great identity. Mm -hmm. Gradually and slowly, when I went out of this, that context, then I uh, uh, took up uh, a poetic name, Haki. Mm -hmm. I, after matriculation, 10th grade, uh, used that as my somehow unconsciously surname. As you know, in many parts of the world, the surname system is not there. Mm -hmm. So that became a sort of surname. But then afterwards, I continued to use uh, Haki. And, uh, you know, it became uh, an official name gradually and slowly with my uh, education. And now the full name is Jan Haki. I'm so glad when I traveled to London for the first time in 1980, uh, and the phone says, what is surname? So for the first time I saw a surname there, you know, that, that consciousness was not there at all. So I was glad that the last name becomes the surname. So yeah. Haki became the surname. <laughs> and uh, with my wife also, that name became the surname. 
And now my grants also use Haki as mm. surname. So identities evolve. Mm. Identities are very, very complex. You know, people use identities looking at the reason, the context, why people ask one thing or the other. You know, uh, you are absolutely right. And to me personally, is something to be proud of that you have too many identities. Someone might ask your ethnicity, someone ask me your language. We have so many, you know, identities and we should be able to live with those identities. There's nothing wrong in uh, having many identities. So, um, this uh, pluralistic society in Dubai, uh, as you are telling me, helped you become still a better person. As you know, today, uh, diversity is seen in many parts of the world as a, as a weakness, and people have a lot of problems adjusting with diversity. But Dubai is an interesting country, uh, you know, where uh, this has benefited, diversity has benefited a lot, tremendously to Dubai, the people of Dubai and other people are living there. Today, amazingly, many of the, you know, international meetings uh, that are, that were supposed to be held in India or Pakistan or other uh, neighboring countries now are held in Dubai. Yeah. Dubai is benefiting uh, from all sides. So this is the, I think, one very good example of using diversity in a positive way. Yeah. And I think we can learn a lot from Dubai's experience. Okay, now coming to almost near end of uh, our discussion, um, Ali Zain, uh, you will be hopefully in a couple of days in Canada uh, and at the university from where I did my own PhD, spent four years, it's a wonderful place. Again, the uh, Canada is, uh, you know, epitome of diversity, pluralism in the world. And this particular university that I know, it's a wonderful place, you know, um, I just share its location um, and the kind of people you will see there in your class, you'll be amazed. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully you will learn a lot uh, from that uh, diversity experiences. Uh, but at the same time, what do you see? Do you see any, any issues, risks? of being in a, in, in a very international context. Any issues or risks? Yeah. I've never thought about the negative sides of <laughs> globalism. Okay. Because I always think um, the globalization, it allows you to make, to be open-minded. Yes. I found myself being very open-minded, being very accepting right. of other cultures. Right. Um, but the risks, I feel that just not losing my own identity in the process yeah. of making a new identity. Um, I'm still very much Indian, but every time I go back to India, I feel like I don't fit in there because there are all these yeah. other kids yeah. who are born and brought up there. Mm -hmm. But deep down, I also know that I will always have that Indian identity with me, no matter even if I change my citizenship or anything. <laughs> but it's just that I hope I never lose that. How would you define Indianness? Indianness. <laughs> It's an interesting, um, it's very, very, very difficult. Yeah. I don't expect you to answer uh, this, but I'm just wondering, uh, you know, as you said, I shouldn't lose my identity as an Indian. So how would you define Indianness? I feel right now, especially right now with the political context, with um, Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister, it's very patriotic. It's very um, nationalistic. Okay. Um, we're very proud of our culture. Mm -hmm. um, and we are very, um, it's very close to our hearts. It's, um, uh, cricket is a big form. Um, my, like, I've become nationalistic because of uh, cricket. Like, whenever, <laughs> okay. whenever India plays, um, no matter where I am, I'm watching the match, just supporting them one. I'm very proud of the team also, even. Okay. But I feel like Indianness, it has its own flaws, right? Just <laughs> anything. Yeah, it's um, it's not perfect. Yes. Um, there is, there's still some close minded, um, people yes, are not accepting right. diversity yes. over there. Um, it has the largest Muslim population, yet mm -hmm. there's still so much, um, un uneasiness over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, very good. Very well said. Um, uh, these are, uh, 
certain things which will be apparent will come through very quickly. I, for one, would uh, uh, look at one or two things, and if I may suggest, you know, to keep in mind, uh, I wouldn't say they are negatives, but uh, risks. Mm -hmm. The first risk is, you know, uh, youngsters get involved in all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. That's my greatest worry with youngsters. Not, uh, you know, a majority youngsters indulge into this, but minority youngsters uh, can indulge into habits which can be damaging. For sure. Like substance use mm -hmm. and what have you. So my submission is that whatever pressure of studies you might have to avoid indulging mm -hmm. into bad social habits. No, no, for sure. I that think, is one yeah, of the yeah. greatest things. Just in our in our generation, it's just social media is very apparent. Exactly. It's it's part of our lives, right? It's like it's how we grew up. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I just feel like people try to fit in with social media. But yeah. So there, there are these um unimaginable realities that people create yes, on social media. Yes, very important. And um, it makes everyone trying to copy them. Yes. It just yeah. Absolutely. So that is something as you used very important word: thinking, reflection. Mm -hmm. do things after a lot of reflection, thinking whether this is good for me. Some friends are suggesting this, but will this be good for me? Why am I here? All the time keep on asking, why am I here in Toronto? Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, what is my main purpose? So becoming conscious of your time while enjoying, you know, traveling across Canada as much as possible and outside Canada if possible, uh, you know, traveling, uh, meeting people, and enjoying the company of your friends. Everything is okay. Um, everything is okay. But, you know, avoiding this particular pitfall, not to indulge in this one. This is one very important thing. The other important thing, uh, I would say, is to become conscious of time. Mm. Uh, you know, time flies. Time is unconsciously happening. So when you enjoy time with friends, I urge you to enjoy mm. uh, time with friends. Go out, walk, enjoy time with friends, but not excessively, not spending too much time in coffee houses or too much time in other places and neglecting your courses, reading, you know, that you are expected from professors. This is the second thing which is very important. Third thing, as a student of education, I would say that while we will have smaller loyalties, you know, to each country, society, ethnic group, religious group, and what have you, I, for one, personally believe that humans must have the character. Educated, particularly educated in good institutions, should be able to transcend mm. these smaller tribal, ethnic, religious, you know, all these identities uh, in a super way mm -hmm. and understanding these in their own, you know, uh, ways, uh, but not getting indulged only in one loyalty at the cost of the other loyalties. That to me is very, very increasingly become important for globalization while you will enjoy playing cricket for example a team an indian team or a dubai team plays cricket you will feel affinity yeah. you will feel empathy for those people which is fine it's understandable but there are certain things that our own countries do that we may not like mm. uh, those should not be promoted in 21st century like parochialism mm. if someone says gets up and says my culture, my faith, my tradition, my this, my this is the super thing. And everybody should be subservient to it. Mm. I think we should have guts to say, yeah, uh, think twice before. Think twice before. Of course. <laughs> say, you know. no. yeah. So that's what I, I'm trying to say, that educated people, learning people, wise people, as this has been always the case throughout the human history. Yeah. If you look at these wonderful thinkers, you know, 
Uh, look at these uh, inventors. The person who, you know, invented the light. Imagine the kind of blessings he made accessible to all humanity. Right. So we should do things that become a blessing mm. for the entire humanity. Yeah. So I think um, that's the advantage of education. Education helps us to explore self and the world around us. If we do that, you know, we become very powerful people, very influential people, very, very opinion making or generating, uh, you know, educated people. There are all sorts of people, all sorts of people are learning, right, mm -hmm. in university. But people who make a difference in their societies, you know, there are not too many. Yeah. Although, in a way, there are quite a few, but not too many in each society. Yeah. So being a change agent, how to effect change in the world, in our families, in our societies, you know, globally, um, how to effect change is a, is a worthwhile end to think all the time yeah. while we are studying. Any final thoughts? And we can conclude now. No, just thank you for the advice. It's of course, um, coming from you. They are just reflections. It's reflections. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, uh, because you will learn so many things in your life. But I, uh, for one, as a student of education, you know, for the last 50 years, I'm in the process of learning as well as teaching. My sense is that I have come to this conclusion that in the world, in the, among the communities, those people make a difference in the communities and in the nations who raise above this my, micro level and operate as much as possible at a macro level. So we should love everybody wherever he or she is coming from. For example, two, uh, two, two countries are fighting. If we happen to meet from the other country, you know, in the Western world, if you look at uh, uh, Indians, Pakistanis, who cares who is from where? Yeah. You know, when it comes to issues of the society, they sit together and resolve their problems and share their resources and what have you. Uh, those problems are there, fine. Um, the governments have to deal with those. And they are also, the, both the governments need to think mm. how long we can continue this, you know, this yeah. enmity, yeah. this feud, rather than you know continuing it, um, fueling through politics or whatever. We need to build bridges as quickly as possible and be part of the global society, you know, becoming friends. How much advantage we can take, you know, by befriending each other. Everybody knows, the people of both countries know. But um, we hope that in the long run, people like you, educated, you know, on humanistic values, I hope will make a difference. Yeah. when the time comes. You no, know, one thing you said about in Pakistan, in, in the Western world, in Dubai, especially, uh, some of my best friends, my best friends are Pakistanis. Right. But it doesn't, yes. there, it doesn't, there's no, uh, it doesn't come in the way. <laughs> do you smell Pakistani nest in them? Or do they smell right. Indian nest in yeah, you? Exactly. you know, these are, you know, related to a particular geographic locality, exactly. in a political context, environment, because of certain history. If you go a little bit beyond 1947, let's say 1900, mm. so where is the problem? This is just one country. <laughs> That's one country. Exactly. Right? And, and civilization, know. powerful civilization. I'm learning so much from uh, the Indian philosophies, for example. Mm. Uh, only today I was discussing with somebody how association, you know, with particular, uh, you know, uh, enthusiasm with our wishes how they spoil human happiness. There's so much to learn in the Indian context from different yeah. faiths, different cultures, different yeah. languages, you know. So that's what we need to admire and celebrate. Mm. Thank you very much, um, Zain. It was a pleasure. Uh, so, so much. It was a pleasure uh, talking to you. This is a naughty uh, granddaughter, so she's interrupting us. <laughs> um, uh, so it was pleasure talking to you, Zain. Um, uh, you know, so many people will be inspired by your thoughts and all the people who might hear this video and particularly from myself, we wish you all the best 
for great success in your study. Thank you so much. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.